Hey guys, it's Katie. It's late. It's Monday night after work. I'm beat. I'm in my bathrobe crafting. So I was just creating a couple of veneers for my coworker's um, gray, black, and white pendant that she would like. And I just wanted to tell you what we're going to create first. So we're first going to create um, a simple makumegane using a little block like this. And we're going to make a cool little veneer out of that. That's a very simple beginner technique, awesome technique to use. The next one we're going to do, let me grab it, is use some Lisa Pavelka peels and, um, or what's it called? The Lisa Pavelka, um, I don't know, peels? I, don't, I really don't know what it's called. Um, they're the, like the silver leaf, the vinyl leaf with the uh, mylar backing. Um, I don't struggle with them and I show you in this tutorial how to try to get the best technique possible. Um, yeah, I don't really struggle with them. A lot of people do. It's all about how you do it, as I say in the video. So we created this cool looking veneer here. So we'll focus with some alcohol inks and her silver back veneer. Oh, my dogs might bark. I think daddy's home. And then we're gonna do one based off of a Bargello I did not that long ago. Oh, hang on. Sorry, daddy's home, so they're gonna bark and get all excited. But I did a pendant like this and on my Bargello tutorial, Sorry, it's reflecting the light pretty good actually with the resin on it. Um, I did this ombre effect and I want to try to do that with some gray and white. So we're going to do that. And I also may do some embossing because I haven't done some embossing yet. So we may do that. And then I will decide on which one I want to use for her project. I'll let her choose. Um, and then we'll use the canes that I've been making, the gray canes, the gray, black, and white canes. And then... Um, Maybe I'll do one for myself, I don't know. So, either way, stay tuned and you will see all of that. Hey guys, it's Katie. Um, tonight, because it's Monday night after work, we're going to be working on some veneers. So most of you know, I've been doing some black and gray canes, black, white, and gray for a coworker, she keeps saying if I make a black, gray, and white type pendant, she would want it. So I've decided to work on one for her. Um, and either way, if she doesn't want it, I'll take it. So I have canes ready, but now I need to figure out what I'm going to put on the other half of my pendant because I usually do double-sided pendants, just like we've done other times. So one side will be the cane flowers, and the other side i got to decide what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do, very simple technique, makumegane. Easy and effective technique. Um, if you're starting out in polymer clay, that's a great technique to watch videos on and learn because it's really effective and super, super easy. So I have black, gray, which is a scrap gray, and then some white. And we're going to layer these. Now the white and the gray are on my thickest setting of my pasta machine. And the black right now is, but I'm going to roll it because I don't want as much black as the rest so I'm going to take this down zero on my atlas 150 is the thickest a zero and a one on my atlas are almost identical so I'm going to take it down to a two maybe that gave me that and I'm thinking I'm going to go to a three yep I'm going to go to a three I don't really want the black to overpower it and then we're going to stack these and I think let me cut some squares and you could use a cutter to cut squares you could just eyeball it it's up to you this is Kato white this is a mix. I know there's some souffle in there because that's my scrap and then this one's primo. So I don't need a lot of this because one, we're going to cut it into very uh, thin veneers and lay it on some scrap clay. So I don't need tons of this. So I'm going to go white. I'm going to put gray next to white. And 
get my bathrobe on. It's it's nice out today. It was in the 70s, but my basement gets cold. So if you ever see, I have a bunch of different bathrobes that I wear down here. And then I'm going to do black next to gray. Okay. Or do I want black next to white? Mm -mm -mm. And you can play with this and decide, do I want to do black? Maybe I'll... No, let's do it next to gray. That's what I initially was going to go with, so that's what I'm going to go with. But you can play on how you stack your colors, and that will vary your patterns some. So we're going to make just a couple different veneers, and then I'll let her pick one, and I can save them for later, or I can make myself one. Okay, so that's what we have. And the next thing I'm going to do is roll it out. Now you can roll it in your pasta machine, or you can roll it by hand. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you're more comfortable with. I do need to get it down some, because these are two of my thickest settings. And so that's going to be two thick just stick in my pasta machine to begin with. So I do need to get it down some, which is why I'm rolling by hand some, and then I'm going to stick it through my machine on the thickest setting, so setting zero. Just like that. And I don't mind if a little of it is uneven. Some people cut that off just to make sure they have all three colors, um, but I'm not going to. You know, I don't care if I have a little extra gray in an area or not. So then what we're going to do is cut this. And the more times you cut and stack, the finer your pattern will get. I don't know why I'm picking it up, but I am. Now, the other thing is I'm going to stack white on black again. It's hard because my like, camera is right in my way. to see actually where I'm supposed to be stacking my cameras, like where my head should be. Okay, And I don't want this pattern to get too thin. I actually want a chunky pattern. So I'm not going to roll it anymore. I'm just going to cut it once more and stack it again. I'm not going to roll it again. But if you want a finer pattern, then you would you know, cut it like I just did, and then roll it through again. And that, the more layers you get, the finer your pattern will get. But I want a chunky pattern. It's almost like when I used to color in coloring books, I always liked the pages with the bolder outlines. So that's what I'm going to get, a bolder outline. So I'm just kind of pushing them together. Okay. And then we're going to make a design. So, I also need to decide, do I want to push the black down through or the white down through? Let's do the white as the top. So I'm going to push it down on my tile. And then we need to grab just some random things. You could use, you know, random things like your blade and stick it down in there. You could grab, um, let's see, where are my circle cutters? You could use a rippled blade, you could use a ball tools, you can use all kinds of things and really play with it and experiment because you can get some cool patterns by using different things. I'm going to use some circle cutters. Uh, you know what I think I also want? These are a little fine. Let me get my, my bigger set of Kemper cutters here. So, I'm going to get my biggest one out, and I'm going to push down all the way through this stack. Now, these cutters that I got have a plunger, and I'm afraid it's going to leave an indent on the top, and I don't want to do that. So then, I guess what I'll do take some oval cutters because they don't have a plunger. So let me take some of my oval cutters 
here. And I'll use that instead. Let's see, do I want to do that size? Maybe this size. So I'm going to cut in, and you can make whatever pattern you want. And we're going to cut all the way through. And this is going to drag the clay. And I'm going to do all four corners. You never know what you're going to get, so just play with it. And I also don't want this pattern to be too busy. Okay. Good. And then I'm going to take... Oh, you know what? Let me grab my ripple blade. Maybe I'll use the ripple blade down the middle. I have my ripple blade here. Maybe I'll use that straight down the middle. I won't curve it, but you could curve it. And you want to keep this together, okay? If, so if a piece falls out, that's okay. Just put it back in. Good. Do I, want? I think I want to put a circle in these, so I'll take my largest of these little ones, and I could use the plastic side. Let's use the plastic side. That will pull the clay a little bit more. And it didn't come out in it, but if it did, I would have just pushed it out and set it back in. take my dotting tool. Let's see. That's a little one. That's a bigger one. <clears throat> Let's use a bigger one for in here. Push it all the way down in. So we're dragging that clay through each layer. Good. And then the little ones, maybe I'll... And maybe I'll take this needle tool. I made these needle tools for my um, polymer clay embroidery, so I'll take just this needle and get even a finer one. So you can fill this up however you want to fill this up. Have fun. You can use cutters with designs like little hearts, little um, flowers, little stars. You can use whatever you want for cutters to make patterns. You can curve your blade all over the place. I think that's enough for me because again I don't want a very big pattern so then all we're gonna do is begin reducing this by just squishing it together so all these holes get filled in I'm gonna start by just taking the sides and you can also take the sides of your blade and really push it in 
slowly because I can't get my fingers all the way down to my board. You know, a duller blade is better. Okay, and once it's solid enough, you can pick it up and then begin. You see how it pushed the clay down in there? That's what we wanted. And this will give you cool looking patterns. Reminds me, I guess it's meant from, um, made from the metalworking, how they do this in metalworking. I've heard of it as Damascus, um, but they do this with steel to make cool patterns on blades. So you see how all those spaces are closing up? That's what we want. So just keep reducing it until everything is one solid piece. And you can just flatten it again. This way. You can use your palm. You could use your roller if you wanted to. This way, like this. Just until all these holes are filled. And that way when you cut a little bit, there's no hole in your thing. If there is a hole in your thing, it's not a big deal either. In your veneer that you make. Okay, and then I'm going to roll it out a little bit, just so it's a little bit bigger, but I don't need it to be huge again. This is a great beginner technique. Actually, I think this is one of the first techniques I did. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to need to grab is some cl scrap clay that I'm going to back put these pieces on. So I'm going to use some kind of gray that I've had for, for making all these canes. So I'll take a piece of this scrap gray and I'm going to roll it out. it very slightly and I'm probably going to do it on a setting three okay. I'm just going to set it on a tile so I can move it out of my way. Okay, so just a piece of scrap there. Next thing we're going to do is begin slicing this. I also want to clean my blade off. The cleaner your blade is, the better for this so it doesn't drag the clay as much. Also, if your clay is really hot, you might want to let it rest for a minute because it might help you um, slice it easier. Oh, I have a new blade upstairs, too. Because I feel like my blade's got, got something on it. I don't know what, but... We'll see. If this doesn't slice well, then I'll go get my new blade. Okay. So, it's easier if it's stuck on your tile. And then we're going to be again taking slices. Now, you can try to get a whole solid slice, but you can also get... Um, uneven slices that adds the effect. Now depending if you're going to cut if have this white side up or if you flip it and have the black side up will depend how it looks as well. Um, I find a flexible tissue blade works better than a firm tissue blade for me but again experiment and play and see what works better for yourself. So let's see now the first couple layers are you're not deep down in but keep those you don't want to get rid of those. because you may need that to fill in your veneer. So I'm just going to take kind of uneven slices here. Once you get down more into the middle where you have all three colors is where you'll get more design.
I'm just going to spin it. So I'm going to cut out as many of these as I possibly can. It's getting a little sticky. I'm going to wipe my blade off. Ooh, it's sticky, sticky. And my tile's moving too. So on one side you'll have more black, one side you'll have more gray. And you may use both in your veneer. You can stand it up like this. Now you don't want to be slicing down the stripes like this. You don't want to be slicing like this. You want to be slicing to where you can see one color on the top when you start slicing, not when you can see all the colors and then start slicing. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So let's slice with this direction, right? Let's try that. See how it's a little more gray? Come on. Which actually I like this side better, so I'm gonna I just pick whatever side of the veneer you like the best. I like that side better. So these little dots there are from the needle. Just little tiny specks. And again, these patterns are more bold because I only did a couple of layers of clay and I didn't roll them very thin in my pasta machine. So again, the thinner, the more times you put it through your pasta machine in the beginning, the finer this pattern will be. And I'm just I'm deciding now what side I like the best and then laying it face up and that way when I lay these on the scrap I can choose and I think I probably have enough to cover my scrap with and you can always keep slicing that. <clears throat> so what we'll do next is we'll take some pieces and I'll probably take the first couple and lay them down first so they're kind of hidden and we're just going to cover our scrap clay. With the slices we took. The white and gray itself is pretty without using the black in there. It's okay if they're overlapping, that's totally fine. This is kind of a random technique, which is why it's so great for learning because there's really, other than making sure you slice it across one color and not through all the colors, um, there's really not many ways to mess this technique up. Oh, I sliced really, really thin. Mm -hmm. 
I need a little bit here because that's a little low. I'm going to take a little piece of this. Stick that in there to make it kind of a little higher. And we're going to burnish this down in a minute and stretch it out and stuff. Let's see. This is just a little plane over here. So let's add that one there. Add this one here. Okay. And then you can put parchment over this, but you don't have to. But let's say we put a piece of parchment over. And we're just going to begin flattening it out. You can use your fingers. Whatever is easier. And I'm on a tile that's moving, so it is making it a little harder. I only have a little area to work where you guys can see what I'm doing. So I try to put things off to the side on a tile. I can use my big roller that sticks to the clay when I have parchment over it. I just ordered a new big roller too. So I'm just feeling with my fingers and I'm going to roll this in my machine in a second once I get it out. Now if you roll it through your machine it is going to distort it. So if you have a pattern you like love, um, do it by hand. And once it gets fairly even, okay, then I'm going to try to pick it up off this little tile. And I'm going to run it through my machine on the thickest setting because the scrap clay I had rolled out on a three and then we added the layer of these slices. So I'm going to do it on my thickest setting going in one direction, okay? That's what I want. I went from here to here. So now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to go from here to here on the next setting. So a setting one, even though it's really not much different. Okay, and then decide if you like it or if you want it a little more stretched. Obviously, the thinner you get it, the um, more stretched out it's going to be. And you can say, hey, I need more of this or that, and cut some more slices and put it on there. I think I'm going to distort it a little bit more. So I'm going to go down one more setting. And then I'm going to go down one more and roll it that way. I'm just kind of distorting it. I'm pushing and pulling it just to see what happens. There we go. I like that. So that's one veneer. Pretty neat. And again, you can do whatever you want. These are super fun in colors. You know, do all kinds of cutters. Um, make it busy, make it not busy. Do whatever you want. This gets a really cool pattern. So that's a very simple Makume Gane, and I'm going to put this in a sheet protector. Um, if you haven't seen my organization technique, I do have one of those. Um, so I'm going to put this in a sheet protector, and I'll be right back, and we'll start on the next veneer. Now these are just basic sheet protectors. I got them on Amazon. I've had my clay in them for about eight or nine months, and they seem to work fine. This one says... I think it says I-N-F-U-N. I-N-F-U-N. Um, it did not say what type of plastic it was when I ordered them, so I did have to check out, or I did have to test it for a while. Um, but what's nice about these is you can also use, put your um, chipboard pieces if you do mixed media. You can put your stencils. You can put all kinds of things. You could wrap your pieces in wax paper or like saran wrap that you know will not react with your polymer clay, then set it in here. Um, so what I do is, because these are regular sheet protectors, top opening, I cut the side, I cut down the side, just so it's easier to get it in and out, because clay can be sticky. Come on, cut, baby. And then, Usually I don't cut down the bottom a lot, but I'll do cut a little bit into the bottom 
like that. And then what I'll do, just pick this up. Set this bin here. will stay nice and clean until I'm ready to use it. Okay, so I'm going to go get ready for the next veneer. I have something out in my car that i got to go grab, but I wanted to try something out that I have never tried. Um, or I haven't... No, I don't think I've ever tried it, but not exactly that. So let me go get it. Okay, so the next thing I have is another piece of scrap, and I'm just using gray in this case. I also have, oh, where is it? Oh no. Where'd it go? Did I drop it? Oh, right here. I also have, which I'm going to cut in half, a coffee stirrer straw. Okay. These tend to work better than regular straws because they're a little skinnier. So your power of your air, which you'll see in a second, will be more powerful and localized. Um, I did get this from the store when I got a coffee this morning. So I have that. And then I have some Lisa Pavelka peels. Now I do know a lot of people struggle with the peels. I don't seem to have an issue the few times I've used them, but we'll see. Maybe I will. So there's a bunch of different colors here. I have two sets and I'm thinking I am just going to go with this silver. Now I like these, the, the Mylar backed ones, a little better than the regular foils because they're a little less, you get less cracking. They're a little less sensitive. So there's a few different ones here. And I, I think I'm just going to go with the silver. Because we're going to make a design on it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the plain silver. And so there is a video. Lisa Pavelka did a video on um, Fire Mountain Gems on her YouTube. On the Fire Mountain Gems YouTube. And... She really shows you how to use her peels, okay? It's less about pressure and more about friction, if I remember correctly how she said it. It's more about friction than pressure. Um, so even though you push hard, you still may not get it to stick. You actually want to just create a bunch of friction with what you're doing. Okay. Sorry, I was just putting that away. And my dogs are outside, so I should probably let them in before I start this. So... You know, you can use um, silver leaf as well. It's just a little more sensitive, okay? Now, with her peels, obviously the color you want up should be facing up, and the dull side should be facing your clay, okay? And then we'll set that on. Now, I don't have a big piece here. I have a piece just big enough for a pendant. Again, because if I don't like it, I didn't make a huge piece. If I like it, I can always make more. So let me let my dogs out, and then we'll do this. We're back in. Okay, they're still out. They didn't want to come in. They're eating grass and stuff, so I may have to pause. So first thing we're going to do is take this and get our either silver leaf, leaf or vinyl backed on here. And you're just going to set it on. Cover your piece. Just lay it on there at first. Try not to get a bunch of air bubbles if you can help it. Because also it won't stick where it's not touching the clay, which would be in a spot with an air bubble. I'm trying to work any air bubbles to the edge. If I can. Now, I recently had a card down here. So I have this card, and it actually came with a cell phone cover to push air bubbles out. So I might use this. Okay, then it's about friction, and she said use your fingertips because also the warmth. And it's mainly about burnishing, just burnishing, burnishing, burnishing. It's less about pressure, more about friction. And also when you rip it off, you need to rip it off like a Band-Aid. Rip it off quickly, okay? If you have a piece that's not sticking, like a little piece, um, which in this case probably won't matter if I have a little piece, but you can set it back on directly over where the bald spot of clay is, and then peel it off from a different, so if you rip from this side, well then spin it and rip from the other side um, after you put more friction. 
So it's all about the friction and the warmth from your hands and making sure you go everywhere. And do it well, you know. I mean, this isn't the time to skimp on it. I want it to stick well. This is definitely not the time to half-ass it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I can see a couple air bubbles in there, so it probably won't stick right there. That's probably a spot I'll have to re-stick it right in. You see them right there? So that's probably a spot that won't actually stick down in there. Just because I had air bubbles. Make sure I get my edges. Okay, ready? <clears throat> and then we're going to rip it off really fast. So get your edge peeled up. I only missed one little spot. And again, I can set that right over the spot. Apply some friction. And then I'll try peeling it off from another direction. And it's stuck. Okay, so if you're struggling with your Lisa Pavalka peels, I mean, you can watch more than just my video. I mean, she has a, she's the creator of it. She has an amazing video on these. And they just crackle a little less. They're a little more sturdy. And I don't have silver leaf all over the place. They're a little less messy. So I actually like them. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews where people don't like them. I actually like them. And then you keep reusing this sheet. You know, I got this whole sheet. So let me get this put back and I'm actually caught. Okay, let me put this away so I don't lose it or ruin it or do something. Okay, so the next thing I have are alcohol inks. And I have a black one, which I don't have much of that I just ordered, the pinata. I have a mixative. This is the Pearl Ranger mixative. I have the Adirondacks copper I thought might be interesting to add a little bit of copper. I also have some white, which I don't know where my little bottle went that I used to pour it into take the cap off and re-pour it into these. So I'm going to use a dropper. Um, let's see, I do have some other mix um, pearl that might work on this. I just got the new, the full set of the um, Ranger Pearls. Like this is a pearl, this smolder. That might be kind of cool. Here's a silver mixative, which is that empty? It's pretty low. Um, just trying to look through my box here. I got all these pearls that are super awesome. Just checking through and see if I have any other. You know, the uh, pebble may work because that's a darker tone. The espresso might. Okay. Again, I'm trying to keep it to the color she asked for, but I don't want to be super only that. So, we're going to drop on some and we're going to blow it with our straw, though the camera is in my face, so this is going to be kind of weird. Let's start with a little black. And I'm going to open it away because my black is old, so it does get stuff on the top little crusties. Okay, and then we're going to put a drop on, and then we're going to blow it. I don't know if this is hard for you to see because it's really reflective. We're just going to keep layering. I don't know if my head gets in the shot on that. And you can layer as many or as little times as you want. 
You know, you could do some with one color, some with another. Now, this is pretty cool. Can you see all the spottiness? Up there, I know this is hard because it's so reflective. But do you see all that spottiness? I think that looks awesome. So let's take maybe the pearl. Let's see what the pearl does. Make sure it shook up well because I've had these for like a year and a half. I bought a three pack of pearl. Kind of let it do its thing. And mix with each other. And you don't need to blow it. You could sponge it. You could do whatever you want. Hard to show you what I'm actually seeing, but in person it looks pretty neat. Um, let me open this big bottle of white. Dry it a little quick. Actually, dip her any up. Ooh. Let's just squirt some on there. I wish I could find my bottle. I'm just going to keep layering things over and over and over to get this kind of cool marbly effect. Um, let me mix up this smolder color. This is the alcohol pearl, one of the new ones. I haven't tried this color yet. Let me mix it up. Oh, it's almost there. Let's see what this gets us. Okay. tilting it next time. See, it dries quickly, though, too. That's a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's try this mineral. I don't know. It's looking fun. Try this, uh, it's called Mineral. It's one of the pearls, too. I'm gonna give them more of a coppery tone. I also have copper. Definitely, it does look different. Then I really like the pebble color. It's just a natural, no pearl in it, but I really like the pebble. So I might use that. It's like one of my favorite colors. It's just like a nice, taupey color. Nice brown, but not too red brown, because I'm not a fan of the red browns. Oh, 
don't know if you can see that at all. I'm sorry, I'm picking it up. If my face is if my face is getting in this shot, I'm sure it looks super weird. <laughs> it's kind of a rusty color. Use a little of the pebble. And because it's got the silver leaf under it, it's all going to be quite shiny. So I want to add a tiny bit more black. And then I'll probably add a tiny bit more white or the pearl maybe even. I'm just doing light pressure there. And it will bleed out on its own because it is alcohol ink. So now that I got a layer of alcohol ink on there, they'll start to, if I don't dry it too much with my air, they'll start to do their thing. Oh, I'll just scratch at the door. Like if you let them do their thing. I'm going to add some more of the pearl. So you could layer this as much or as little as you want. Now it looks like if you do lighter pressure you can get it to kind of spindle out. Let's just let a dot go and see what it does. Maybe a little dot. Yeah. Let's just let it do its thing. Because it is alcohol ink, so they will react with each other. I feel like I need a little drop of white, too, which is hard with this big ass dropper. I do like alcohol ink. It's fun on crafts too. I've used it on mirrors, old ugly mirrors, frames, cardstock. Alcohol ink just does fun. I'm sorry, my maximum recording time had been reached. I had to delete some videos that I uploaded today. So, I think I'm pretty happy with that. You could also add some driplets of alcohol on it and see if you can get it to move a little bit there. Oh, well, maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. Why not? Let's take some 99% alcohol, which if you do any alcohol inks, you should have 99% alcohol. Let's see. I have a toothpick here. I'm not going to miss the whole thing because I want it to be a little more controlled. Let's put some dots of that on. Let's see how that reacts. That will get the clay to move a little bit. I do have a mister bottle, but I don't want to mist everything. You could use a paintbrush.
And then if we come back in a second, we'll be able to see. It takes a second to, oh, 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 dropping all my bottles. It takes a second to react, but you see there, it's changing that color. It's kind of just changing all the colors. I feel like I need something more on top of this black. You see here how it's reacting with it? So maybe just a little more alcohol on this black to get it to blend out a little bit. Let's see what that does. It's not doing too much there. Let's see if I have enough of this silver. Let's use a little of this silver maybe. I know you can see my head. I just watched... Just watched when I was deleting some videos. I was like, oh god. Yeah. I like the mineral color better than the copper. Or was it the copper I liked? I don't know. So this, you can absolutely create whatever you want. Just play and play and play on top of polymer clay. That's really all it is. Okay, so I'm going to let that alcohol sit. Now you can see it's wet. I'm going to let that see what that does. You know, you could tilt it and that will drag it around a little bit. Bleed a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit, and then I'll show you when that's done. So the next one I'm thinking of doing is creating like an ombre bargello, kind of like I did here, where it's a pale going into a darker. But I don't know if that's going to quite work out, because these are really pale colors. So it may or may not work out. But we'll try, maybe we'll try that, doing the little squares. So I think this one's still drying. It's almost completely dry. I think it looks cool. And I think it'll look cool on half a pendant, you know. So there's another type of veneer we could use. And then, so the Bargello one, I'm going to get some colors here. Let's see. So I'm going to use that light gray that I used on the first one. And then I think I'm just going to do light gray and white. Because I don't want to, I think i got to go clean my hands. I'm going to use light gray and white um, because I don't want it to be too, too dark. Alcohol ink on there. So what I'll do is I'm going to go clean my hands, get a little white out with my light gray. This is a light gray. And then we'll Skinner blend this and we'll make a Bargello that I showed in my the Bargello video. Again, this is a technique that's been around for probably hundreds of years. Um, nothing new. I'm not the first one to create it. There's many videos out there. Um, I've watched maybe one or two. Um, not them all, so I can't reference all of them. I know I probably watched one on um, Jessima Designs. I watch her a lot, Samantha Burroughs. Um, and then I think, did Fiona Abel Smith do one? No, um, Cindy Leach. 
leets on your polymer clay tutor was the other one I watched. Other than that, I haven't watched anybody else, so if I don't credit them, it's because I never watched them. Um, there's hundreds of videos on YouTube, and unfortunately I can't reference everybody because I haven't watched them all. So, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, so the final one we're doing is um, that little Bargello technique. This one has something on it, some alcohol ink pieces or something, whatever. It's going to get all mixed in. So I'm going to do a teardrop Skinner blend. It's the way I tend to like to do Skinner blends. Um, so just take a ball and you're going to make like a chopping or you could do it on your table. Um, but I do it in my hands usually and kind of like a hot chop, 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 you know, motion. I don't know how else to explain it and kind of just, now this is female, so it's a little firmer. And I've had it resting. I ate a pickle or two. <laughs> I was hanging out, so I got a little chilled. I had it conditioned, but it'll warm back up when I condition it. So, and then we put them opposite, big side to little side. Okay. And I'm just going to do white and the gray. Just like that. And then we'll take our roller. And because that's way too thick to fit through my machine, I'm just going to roll it out a little bit. Now, you have seen this technique in my Bargello um, video. Again, Bargello is nothing new, but I've played with some techniques recently, and I really like the way they came out. And I want to try to do this one in a slightly darker tone and see if I can get something cool out of this. And then we'll see what one she likes. Okay. So this is what we have, and this uh, white's probably not going to move as fast because it's definitely stiffer right now because uh, it's probably been resting a good 45 minutes since I made the last veneer, since I conditioned it. Um, so I'm going to run this through on my thickest setting first just to get it to come together. Okay, and I can see an air bubble right there. So I'm going to take my blade, and there's actually a finer one because this is scrap clay, so I tend to get air bubbles in scrap. If you see them, this is good practice just to slice them right from the beginning on. And then we're going to fold it. <clears throat> so again, you always want to fold. There's great um, Skinner Blend videos out there. Check them out. Check out the teardrop one. Check out the regular one. Um, you always want to fold to when, you know, just put your stripes away from you. Both stripes away from you. Not like this. Okay. Put both stripes away from you vertically. You want to fold it in half. Flick of alcohol ink. Um, and you want to fold it to where on one side, you know, you have the, the fold on the bottom. On one side, you have one color, the other side, you have another color. You do not want to fold it in half like this to where you can see both colors. Okay? So you always want to put your stripes away from you and then like that. Okay? Now, we're going to stick it in the machine where all of your colors are touching the roller. Fold first, and that way any air is pushed out. Okay? And you're just going to continue doing this over and over and over. And I did wipe down my pasta machine with some, a tissue or a paper towel, the underside, just to make sure it was clean so I didn't get the white super dirty even though I wear a bathrobe all the time and there's a lot of lint from those. So I'm just pushing the white end so it conditions this side here. And so I'm going to continue doing this until I'm happy with it and that may be at a different point than you're happy with it. You know, we all are happy with things at different points so I'm just going to keep conditioning it. Hopefully this will soften up, this white, because it was just soft like an hour ago. I guess it's been like an hour. I should have warmed it up a little bit because it is female professional, so it is slightly stiffer. So I'm going to keep doing this, and when I'm happy, I will be back, and we will create what I'm calling like an ombre effect, if I can get it to do that with these two colors. And then we'll have a couple veneers. Now at some point I may decide um, when I'm making the pendant, because I would do it after it bakes, to do some embossing maybe with some silver. I could do some silver on something. 
I don't know. We'll see if she likes any of these veneers. And if she isn't super thrilled with one of them, then I'll keep coming up with different ones. Um, you know, because I so far I like them all. And I'm sure I'd use them for something for myself. So we're coming into fall soon. So all of these colors are going to go well with fall and winter. You know, even that Makumegane we did, that might be cool for like a Halloween type project. That black, gray, and white. So I'm going to keep blending this. And it's getting a little wider, which means I'm going to have less and less to fold. Actually, let me get it a little wider and let me show you. I've showed you before, but let me show you how to... Um, fix that if it gets too wide to where you don't have enough to fold. Let me just do that. Hang on. Okay, so I'm at a point here where it's really short this way and I'm not really having much to fold. And I don't like that when it gets wider this way and shorter this way. So what I would do, so usually I do this throughout and that way it doesn't get like this because it'll take a while now to work it back down. I'm just going to take the sides and each time it comes out of the pasta machine. I'm going to push the sides in. And it will make it all and weird at first, but it will get back to square. I'm also going to take the middle and scrunch it up. Because this needs to go quite a bit in size. I'm going to roll it through. And then I'm going to fold it again. Scrunch it up a little bit, flip it, scrunch it a little bit more, roll it through. And see now I'm getting a little shorter this way and longer that way. That's how I prefer it. I prefer to have more to fold and a little skinnier. Though I do want to keep it a good width for my pendants, you know. Um, so I don't want to get too, too skinny, but I do want to oh, crumb of something. Yes, I eat down here, too. <laughs> I kind of do everything in our basement. I have a TV set up. I got all my crafting stuff. So after work, I come down. and This is my relaxing place. My fiancé watches his TV upstairs. When he's chilling out, I do my stuff downstairs. Sometimes we converge in the living room, but, you know. <laughs> he likes to watch, like, Star Trek and stuff. And I prefer to watch, like, Animal Planet and... The game show network and so <laughs> I mean we'll watch movies and stuff together but unless we have a show we, we like a lot of the same shows it's just not like normal TV like when your shows aren't on you know your series that you're into so see how it's getting nice and thin and that's how I'll keep it each time I just now that it's about that that size I'll just do a little push each time and that will keep it nice and thin for me. So I'm going to finish this. It's blending pretty nicely. This white's still a little crumbly. Still getting pieces coming off the white. Get off of my... And um, so I'll finish this until I'm happy. It's blending nicely. And then I'll be back and we'll look at the next part. Okay, so I'm about happy with this here. And we're going to create a Bargello from this. So I'm going to try to do it all on one work surface, which is really hard because I'm only working in a small area for you to see um, without me being zoomed out too far. So first thing I'm going to do is cut them this way, okay, with all my colors going vertically, okay? So I'm going to straighten off an end here. And all we're going to do just try to cut a fairly even piece, cut it all the way down through, and then pull towards you, and that should stick it on, okay? And then we'll go over here, I'm going to go a little lower, and then you can tap it on. The first one's the hardest one to get to stick, but if you pull away, you should be able to get it stick to stick. Okay, and then roughly try to do the same thickness. Pull towards you. And these I'm only going to go up, down, up, down. I'm only going to stagger it once. 
I'm going to push it towards the next one. And pull away. Sorry, this is a screechy technique. Just wipe my blade off a little bit. Look at that thickness. And it gets easier the more stuck down it gets. And the even, the more even you can keep these in this particular particular technique, the easier or the better it will look. Um, in other bargellos, you can totally do thick thin. You can do whatever you want. It's something sticking. That gray is sticking quite a bit to my to my blade. Let me see here. Hang on. Do 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 do. Let me clean off another blade. This might work, it might not work. Let me see if I take another blade, kind of pat it down a little bit. Let's see. No, kind of rolled on me. Come on, stick. This gray is really sticky to my blade, is, is what it is. So I'm just going up one, down one, up one, down one. Here we go. And you can vary it however much you want. I'm just pushing it against the other one. Turn away. Sometimes because you pushed away, you'll get a little crud on your blade. Just wipe it off. <clears throat> and again, you can stagger these as much or as little as you want. But we're going to cut them again in a second. that gray that's sticking. So I'm going to finish the same thing. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And then I'll be back once I'm done that. Okay. Okay, so now that we have it all laid out, I'm going to burnish it off using a piece of parchment. And I try to use my parchment over and over. So it might get some stuff stuck on it, but I can deal with that later. And I'm going to go with the lines at first, make sure my ends are pushed in nicely. And I tend to go with the grain at first. Make sure you do the ends. And this will, you're always going to have a look of variation of lines, but without having the texture of lines, just because of the color. Bargello technique is also a nice beginner technique, great for scrap clay. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. Like a lot of ways you can play with it. Just by cutting little strips of clay. Just either clay on my finger or clay on that. So once it's fairly smooth, then I'll go in circles. And that way I, I didn't distort one row too, too much. I went with it and made it all one length. And now I'm kind of just burnishing it to get it all in one sheet. I like using my finger, but I know some people take their roller. and Without rolling, they do it like this.
I don't know if I said, but that strip, that Skinner blend was on my thickest setting. Really burnish it well because we're going to be cutting this again in a second. Okay. It's a pretty cool one. So then, wipe on my blade. So for me to pick stuff up off this tile is quite difficult. It is a tile that slides around fairly easy because if I work on my big glass tile behind it, I get a lot of reflection from my light that makes it look darker. Um, what I'm doing darker. So I work on this matte tile so I don't get light reflection. Now, I can't just pull through with my blade to pick it up, otherwise it will pull the whole tile off my table. So I have to kind of saw it off a lot of times. And pick it up slowly, especially if I just burnish it down. See, my tile is even moving with that. Okay. So then we're going to flip it in the opposite direction here. it back down again. Make sure this part's good and burnished. Okay, and now that it's nice and flat, we're going to cut in the opposite direction. So even off an end. And keep that because that's all one color clay. But it doesn't matter, you can mix these all up. And we're going to start cutting in this direction. And then I think I'm going to get a tile and put this on a tile. Okay, and then we're going to lay this down like that. And I can still see the lines, okay? Even though they're fairly flat, I can still see the lines. So each time we're going to stagger one square. And at first it won't look like much, but it eventually will. So try to keep them about the same thickness each strip. So look back and forth, pull it towards you and it should stick. And then try to go down one square. Stuck. The spray is super soft. super soft. Don't give me trouble, Gray. I'm on a video here. And it's not really about the squares. It's more just what it's going to create with the squares. This is the end to end, so it's pretty much just one tone of gray. And I didn't really stagger it quite enough there. That's okay. I should let this rest for a minute, honestly, and let it cool. And I'd probably struggle a little less with it. <clears throat> Which is what I may just decide to pause for a second and do that. But once we get into the middle of the blend, it'll look kind of neat is what I'm hoping. did before when I did it. But there will be one section that I want to use. I'm wiping off my blade each time. That way it releases a little easier for me. And once I get towards the white, it will be a little easier. But 
The first couple are always kind of hard. Come on, stick. And I do tend to cut a little crooked. Crooked, It won't be the end of the world. It's also sticking to my tile. Good. And we're going to start to see a kind of cool pattern, especially right in this area here. Basically, we're just going down one, up one, just like before. The, th the thinner the strips, the more finicky it's going to be. And now that I'm getting in multiple shades, I can actually see where the squares are. And I'm trying to overlap them like a checkered board. Which in this tone you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time seeing on camera. But when you do it in person, you'll be able to see it. Don't stretch. Yeah, this gray really needs to rest a little bit. So I stretch that side out a little bit, but ah. Let me take one of my silicone tools and see if that so I don't know if you can see here. Don't look at this end because that's where it just stretched. But I can see a dark gray, light gray. So you can kind of stagger them like that. These, because it's stretched, I tried to stretch it a little more so it was a little more uneven down here, but here it came. So again, I'm looking at one little part. Everybody's going to be looking at it as a whole. I'm starting to get the white so it will be a little less sticky. Also, I'm doing pretty thin strips, so if I had done thicker strips, it would have been easier. So I'm going to put a dark square against a white square, white square against a dark square. Or light against the dark. And this may look cool in bigger strips, you know. I don't know, you're going to have to play with it. So that's light on light. Oh, that was sticking. That's light on dark on that end. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Your mind will see what it wants to see. The brain is really good. It's just like when you're oil painting. You don't need to um, paint every little feather. You just got to hint at it. And the brain is very good at interpreting what it should be seeing or what it thinks it's seeing. So. Ow! Son of a bitch. 
So when it does that, it stretches out. Oh well. It's gonna happen. Good thing we can pick from the best part of our sheet. So yeah, I'd say if your clay's sticky, let it rest a little bit before you cut. Because that's really the only thing that's giving me trouble. But it is summertime too. If it was winter time, I probably wouldn't have as much trouble. So now I'm getting into the part where you can really see the difference here. Stick. Not to my blade. I'm getting specks of flake from somewhere. It must have been from my in my scrap box. Like silver leaf or something. goal was to take from this middle. And I didn't cut every square perfectly the first time and I also are get they're getting a little squished together so some are a little thinner than others. But try to cut as evenly of strips as you can. I bet a, a clay slicer would work awesome for this. Because other than cutting canes, I'm sure you could stick a sheet on there, a veneer like this, and cut strips. Let me know if you can. I assume you can. It's one of the things I'm saving up for. That's my next big purchase. Is it like a Lucy Clay Slicer, and I'm going to go for the big one. I mean, the mini seems to work well for some people and not other people, but it seems like, you know, that extra hundred bucks is going to be worth it, from what people are saying on the Facebook groups when I asked. So I'm saving up for it. I can't wait. It'd be so nice. And it's probably going to save you money in the long run on non-wasting, not wasting clay. Not that I really ever waste clay. None of my clay gets thrown away unless like I drop it on the floor and it gets covered in dog hair or something. But none of my clay ever gets wasted. I use a lot of scrap clay colors. I mean, you guys see it all the time in my canes. Same with this. Like I have no clue what colors these are. These were a bunch of regular colors, now they're just mixed up to form a gray. So this part here that we're getting to is the part I actually wanted. It was the part I was looking for to fade out into white. But I'm going to put the whole white on there. I may need it. Oh, that's stuck right down. I can still see slight gray. In person, I can see a slight tint of the white. Soon I'm not going to be able to. I'm still going to stagger just in case some people's eyes can pick it up. It doesn't seem like the camera can really pick it up. Oh, I just bumped the corner. So we're almost to the end. I know I recorded the whole thing, but I did want you to see what I was doing. This may just be pure white, but I'm going to stagger the squares just so I have a pattern when we smooth it out. 
Now I could put this on some backing after we burnish it and that way I have a little bit more, I could stretch it out a little bit. If I need this to be bigger, which I may do when I do the project. And this is all pretty much pure white here. I'll put that back with my Female Pro. And then take this and we'll lay that on again and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to push straight down the first time just to make sure they're roughly all the height, same height. It's really this area I want right in here. So I guess if I made my Skinner blend wider in there I would have had more, more of that. Because I can see it from about here to here really nicely, which I would probably use from here to here because I'd want more white in this design. Or you could do it this way, or this way when you cut a pendant, you know, you can do it any way you want. You can cut multiple pieces out of this if you want. Just gonna lightly burnish. Definitely go lighter than harder the first few times. Once you start to burnish, you really it'll really start to come out. Even in the gray area. try to get all these lines out. So again, I'm not rolling, I'm just dragging. I'm going from all directions. And you can even see it up in here. You know? Once I can, if I can get all these smoothed off well enough. Okay, so I'm going to work on this a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing, try to get all of these burnished out, and then um, I'll show you when it's done. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so there it is, mostly done. I do have a little stuff on it. I could shave that off, um, either with my blade, or I could take a little alcohol to it, just kind of whatever you want to do. Here's some light. It's reflective, so it's got to be like some silver leaf or something. That gray is so freaking sticky. Which if I let this rest for a little while, it'd probably be easier to do this. Okay. Either way, I can deal with that later. So you can see it in here, and you can also see it in here. Now, it's okay that there are still squares because once I get this on and resined, you're not going to really see any of that. And I think I'm going to flatten it out a little bit more, like thin it out a little bit more when I roll it. So you can kind of see it on the back here, but on the front, you won't really know there's any texture. So but before I pick it up or anything, I would let this rest and then I would put it on a piece of paper and kind of give it a roll and stretch it a little bit. But that's an easy way, you know, here's a cool one, you know, I don't know, it's just a cool looking technique. I like it. I'll get a nice fade. This part's beautiful. I'll get a nice fade, you know, if we put a cutter on here, any kind of cutter, but if we set, were to set like a cutter on here, you know, like that would be awesome, I think, so. Anyways, that's that one. Sorry, my dogs are going berserk upstairs. Okay, so there's um, a couple of veneers we made. We made this alcohol ink one. We made this Bargello one. And we also made this Makume Gane. 
and out of all of them you know this one's definitely more time consuming but they're all quite fun and relaxing to do so I hope you guys enjoyed that we will be using these in future projects as well and um, I'll see you next time later okay so I want to make one more veneer so I have this and I've found this happens a lot to me when I'm using a stiff clay and a um, softer clay when you're mixing it in through your pasta machine you get this really cool pattern and this was just an old cane I was mixing together but I really like that so I'm gonna keep this one um, but again I'm trying to make up veneers for my coworker. so we've already made oops, drop my rolling pin we've already made these three and this one I think is really gonna look awesome under resin I really do I think that's gonna look great under resin so we have these three veneers and so what I'm going to do is get out some really stiff clay, which for me is Kato. And it's pretty stiff, but it's not like crazy, crazy stiff. But I'm going to get some out of my bag that I had added some conditioner in a while back. It's definitely stiff. It's going to take a good amount of conditioning to get it to do its thing. Okay. And then I'm going to get a softer clay. But first I got to get this together a little bit. And then we're going to get a softer clay and kind of mix it in. I don't know. Maybe it will just be a dark gray. I don't think I'll do waste pure black. Not that I'm wasting it, but, you know, maybe I'll get a couple different grays. You know, we'll try to see what we can accomplish with a couple different tones. Because, like I said, this was an old, just an old cane. And I don't know if you've ever seen that when you were mixing clays. I just love the way it looks, so I'm going to see if we can achieve that tonight. And we may not be able to. It doesn't happen every time for me. Only sometimes. Um, it's just the differences of the clay, and it's not 100% mixed. And as it's mixing, you get this really cool pattern. So I'm just trying to get this to ball up so it doesn't fall apart in my pasta machine. But even if it does, it's okay, because that's what that one did. So then, let's see. I have this, this leftover from the flour I made the other day, so I'll probably use that. Is that from the same flour? Yep, that's the end. Is that from the same thing? No, that's from a different one. Let's take, well, no, that's from the same one. It's just this part here, so it's the same gray. Then maybe, I'm thinking maybe I'd get some blue or something. I do have some of this from that veneer I made with the alcohol inks. I don't want a lot of the brown in it though. Some of the translucent. Might just give some cool weird coloring in there. She's a black person. She wears a lot of black and gray. Again, I don't want much of this brown. I love using my scraps. I really, I use them a lot. If you are not a scrap person, definitely get into using your scraps because you can get some really, really cool kind of effects from your scraps. And then I have another, this one's really kind of crumbly. Not crumbly, but this one's, it's Kato too. This is a Kato mix because you can smell it. it smells like Kato. So I'm going to get a little of that in there. I don't want to add a lot of blue to her stuff because I don't know. She's got blonde hair. I think she looks good in blue. <laughs> I'll add some blue. So this is my soft right here. All this stuff is my soft. Maybe I'll just... I don't want to chop it a lot, actually, because that one I didn't really chop. So let's do that. And then let's add some of this in here. And this I really, when I when I get these patterns, I have no agenda. It always happens to me when I'm not planning on it to happening. So I'm not going to try to plan anything. I'm just going to stick this throughout and we'll start mixing it up and see if I can achieve a cool look. A cool crumbly kind of streaky look as it mixes in. I guess I can add some more white after. So all I'm going to do is just kind of thin it out. And it may fall apart in my pasta machine totally okay. So my thickest setting, I'm going to run it through. And you see how it starts to pull that crumbly clay. So I'm just going to kind of keep 
working them in there. And we'll see if we can achieve a cool effect. See that? I love that. I really do. I don't know why I like that look, but I, I do. So I'm going to just take some more clumps of it. I like this side. But it's hard because then you get to over mixing it and then it doesn't do it. I'm going to go from a different direction. And then it gets tough because it's like, ah, do you want to ruin a side? Let's do this side. See that? Just by running it through, you get these really neat, I don't know, I've always liked these patterns it creates, and now I'm afraid I'm going to get too far. Let's do down here, because I like this part. Let's see if I can save it. Yeah, see? Even that's awesome, you know? That looks like tears or like claws. I'm going to go this way a little bit. I just, I don't, I, every time it does it to me, I'm like, I like that. So I figured I might as well kind of try to take advantage of it. I really like that right there. That side looks kind of neat. Let's do it one more time. I might ruin it, but let's try. There we go. Doesn't that look cool? So I might keep that one as well. You know, and this could be one side of a pendant. It almost gives that kind of faux wood effect without actually being faux wood or like stone or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just like the way it, it like tears and stuff. So it's not 100% conditioned and it's really kind of, like I said, crumbly clay. And that Kato I had put with... Um, some uh, clay softener. So if I use some straight out of the block that I haven't done, I have this other veneer sitting here and I haven't known what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I can mix it with that. I'm afraid to ruin that one. I really like that one. So I'm not going to do that one. Let's do one more. Let's see. I'm going to take some of the non, no clay softener. This stuff is like super dry. i got to chop it up and get some more in my bag. Right? Like, this stuff is like crazy dry, which is how I figured this out because I started mixing it with like a softer clay. I mean, honestly, I've tried to condition this stuff before and without leaving it in a bag, I can't get it to come together. I don't care how much I beat it. I can put it in a bag and beat this with my rubber mallet, which I have down here. I had my fiance get me one at the hardware store. I can keep it in my hands. I can... I don't have big boobs, so I can't put it under my boobs, but, you know. And then, let's see. I got a cool looking, this is my blue bag of scraps. Cool looking blue bag. Of these softer. Yeah, that one's definitely softer, so let's take a little of that. Take a little of that. Another great way to use your scraps up. Let's again take some more gray and get rid of this bag. Oh, I got the gray in here. It's a dark gray. Let's use this up. Oh, that's stuff. Oh, that's Kato too. Okay, let's use a little of that. Maybe that will get a cool pattern too. It doesn't have to be white, it can be any kind of crumbly clay you, clay you have. Might be too much white there. Cause I don't need a big piece cause this, or a big pile because this is only going to be half of my pendant. When I do pendants, only half of that would be being used. You know, because I, I like, as you guys know, if you follow me, I like to do two-sided pendants. So I don't need any huge pieces of any one veneer. Most of the veneers I'm making tonight, I can get two, three pieces out of them. So I'm sticking my soft clay in with my crumblier clay. 
and then I'll just kind of not mix it up but kind of ball it together you know what oh, I have a little green here too let's use a little green this is another soft one let's use a little of this kind of color throw some bright in there right why not let's play right it's getting really late now it's what midnight Midnight, Monday night on midnight. I should really go to bed soon. Mm. I have to do craft day with the kids tomorrow. All summer, my mom signed me up to do craft day. Every Tuesday, which is my one day off because I work 12 hours a day, she signed me up to do craft day with the kids. And I'm not talking like four-year-olds anymore. I'm talking these kids are like 13. I'm like, Mom, these crafts are going to be expensive because it's not like popsicle sticks anymore. She's like, I'll pay for it. <laughs> so I ordered, we did tie-dye, but we did beach towels because my parents just bought their first house and um, they have a pool. And so I bought white towels and we did tie-dye towels. Yeah, we did that. We I bought these wood letters and a bunch of buttons and they did buttons on them, which look really cool for their rooms. You know, because two of them, one's eight, one's nine, one's 11. Um, you know, nice big wood letters. Um, we did... A cheap one, an easy one. I took ma um, like mason jars, glass jars, and we got tissue paper and we mod podged it on so they could use that as pencil holder. We took yarn, wrapped it around a balloon, and made them a lantern. And I got some cheap 4th of July string lights that they could put in it. So, like, it costs like 200 bucks total all summer. And we have a couple more things that we did. Oh, I got them the 5D diamond painting to try. Figured that would be good on rainy days when my mom was watching them. I was like, yeah, I need like 150 bucks. She's like, what? I was like, yeah, I told you it wasn't going to be cheap. <laughs> it's just funny. But I do that every Tuesday, and tomorrow's the last Tuesday. Which, I actually, have to say I'm excited because Tuesday is my day off where there's no one home. And I can vacuum. I can do all my stuff. When my fiancé's home on the weekend, I kind of feel bad vacuuming and making all kinds of noise. Anyway, sorry. So I'm just going to get all these kind of into a ball again it's okay if it when it comes through your machine pieces of this white fall off that happens to me um, you know because this white's so much harder okay so I'm gonna run it through and again this is what's happening and that is okay that's what happens when I get this technique and as it works into the softer clay that's when I tend to get um, the patterns going. So on this one I'll probably fold it this way. I'm just getting any of these little white pieces that flung off and I feel like I need one over here. Okay and then we'll run it through one more time. And again this is about under blending I guess. Which I know conditioning properly is super important but I really like the way it looks, so I'm doing it. Okay, so here's the next time. So again, still not. I may uh, try fold it, and then again, keep your folds on the outside. You want your rollers to push the air up through and out a non-folded area. So it's still crumbling, but this will come together. See, we're starting to get the cool effects. So as it starts to work in and mix in with the clay, it's going to start making these really cool effects. So again, I tri-folded it, and I'm going to put it in the rollers here first, not with the fold first. Okay, not quite there. It's got to get a little more mixed than that, but I want to show you each way so if it happens to you. So again, this clay was a lot harder than the one I just did with this, okay? So, but this is how I've seen this pattern occur with this really because I've tried mixing this clay before I figured out how to leave it in a bag with clay softener like I showed you in that tutorial this is how I saw this pattern and I really quite like the weird effect even though it's not all the way there yet um, actually I'm only going to fold it in half I don't want to mix it crazy crazy a lot See? I'm starting to like that. I don't know about you guys, but I'm 
Now my projects are usually resin, so that will help give it strength if not conditioning it properly. I'm trying to contemplate if I want to do it one more time or not, or if I like that the way it is. Maybe I'll fold this part over, see if I can get that to go in a little bit more. And I'll put it in like this, if this is my rollers. I like this side. It looks like, again, like oil painting, like when I take my paintbrush to make mountain effects. But I'd have to thin this out if that's going to be big enough. Because most of my pendants are like two and a half inches. So I'm just going to stretch it out. So that's a setting one, um, two. And a setting three. I think both sides look cool, but I think I like this side the best here. So that's another kind of neat effect you can get with really dry, crumbly clay with soft clay. So I'll show her these two as well and see if she likes either of these. I do. So that's a fun, fun thing you could do. Fun, easy thing you could do. If, especially if you have really dry clay. Anyways, I think that's it for this one. And then once she decides what one she likes, we'll make a pendant tutorial. And I'll show you how I put hers together and then mine because I'm going to do the same gray flowers, but I'm also going to use this dusty rose that I made from my rose tutorial, but this one's different colors. These are all scrap clay colors to make this dusty rose. Okay. So I, oh, because this is going to be the end of the tutorial. If this tutorial was helpful for you, it may be helpful for someone else. It may be inspiring to someone else if it was inspiring to you. So please like, share. If you have any questions, write below in the comments. I also have a Facebook page. It's called Katie's Polymer Clay Friends. K-A-T-I-E apostrophe S. Polymer Clay Friends on Facebook. Um, we have a lot of great people on there, so please join us. Um, yeah, give me a thumbs up, whatever you'd like. And I will see you guys next time when we actually use some of these. Later.